All right, my friends and maybe a few enemies who are watching my videos, it is time to see what we can do with this console port as far as strengthening the security that we have on it right now. So we know by default we don't have any security on it, no password, no nothing. And this is the port through which someone will make a physical connection to your network device. So it's not a bad idea to have a password on it. And we did just that in the last video. We put the word basketball on the console line. And actually, let me show you that live. That's kind of a synopsis there. But here's the config that we have on the console line right now. The exec timeout and logging synchronous commands are, lo are lab commands. And the passwords that the password and the login command, that's what we put on in the last video. So right now, if I log out of here, just a quick review, hit return, I'm going to be prompted for that password. I need to put in basketball here. Good thing I got it that time, huh? And you see, of course, we know that if we had three bad passwords, it, the screen rolls around and basically just gives you three more chances. But you'll also notice none of those three times did the password appear. Good thing to remember. Then I wanted to go from user exec, which is the one with the arrowhead, to enable mode, just put ENA for enable, was prompted for the password. I put in the enable secret of CCNA because we know that takes precedence over the enable password CCENT. And that right now is where we are. So we would, that's, that's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to put a password on that port, but there are some things to consider when you're just putting a one size fits all password on a port. And I hope you're sitting down because some of these are just going to astonish you. First off, there's no accountability because no username is asked for. And we're not at that point in your studies yet, but in future studies you'll learn that you can actually set up a server where people log in and their authentication is checked on a separate server and then their movements basically are tracked. So maybe you have accounting set up in your business where, you know, if Department A uses Department B services, Department B bills them for that, you can actually track it to that extent. But with this, with no username at all, just a one-size-fits-all password, there's no accountability at all. Secondly, by its very definition and its nature, a password by itself is easier to crack than a username-password combination just because there are fewer variables. And that third one, I know this will stun you, but passwords are actually shared by human beings who should not share them. It's been that way since the dawn of time, and it's going to go on for a long time to come. Therefore, we are much better off protecting that console port with some unique username and password combinations. And that's just what we'll do by creating a database of usernames and passwords right on the switch. And that's why we're going to actually call it a local database because it is on the very device that it's going to be used to authenticate people. And don't let the word database intimidate you. Uh, it's a very simple command and this is the easiest database you're ever going to work with. And I'll show you the usernames and passwords actually as we input them into the device because that's what we're going to do right now. So the command starts with username and you simply put whatever name you want to put. A lot of options here and you could go a long time without ever using most of these. The one we're going to stick with right now is password. And then you just signify their password. And I'm just going to enter it straight. So I'm going to put gasoline here. And then frankly you just um, repeat the process until you've got all your, your users in there. And we'll put one in for the person who gets things done here in Richmond, Virginia. Nutsy the squirrel. If you knew our city council you wouldn't be laughing at that. Now, we've got our username password database, but how do we apply it to the line? How do we apply it to the console line? Well, let's just scroll back up. We've got it right up here. Now, if I were doing this in a real world network, I would take password basketball off the console line strictly for good housekeeping and not the magazine, actually strictly good housekeeping. So I tell you, this is a really good habit to get into and you can start it, especially if you're near the beginning of your career, but if you've been doing this for a while, start doing it now. When you're configuring devices and a command is no longer needed for some reason or you're removing an, ACE, an access list, whatever, take it off the device because the person coming behind you one day may not know as much as you and they might look at this and say after we configure this say okay you know I'm putting in the password basketball but it doesn't work well it's not going to work 
because of what we're about to do, we're going to switch over from authenticating with that password to our username database. But if you leave password basketball there, someone someday might get kind of confused about that. I'm leaving it there for a reason which will become apparent at the end of the video. But again, I just want to mention ordinarily, I would just go ahead and take basket, password basketball out of there. What I will do is go to the line and let's look at our options for local excuse me for login now local local password checking that means it's looking on this device for that username password database that we just created now the TACX server you'll be introduced to that later but that's like an extra process and that's one of the things that makes that accounting possible that I mentioned to you right now we're just going to go login local and that's all there are no options you don't have to even name the database anything like that so we've done a login local and let's log out now so there's the same prompt we were getting before and now notice we're being asked for a username we've never been asked for that before so our configuration is correct login local is definitely working and I assure you if I put basketball in here it's not gonna work and I'm sure you noticed something really odd about that that the word basketball actually appeared your username is going to appear here by default the password will not just one of those things so I will go ahead and put in signal here gasoline there enable CCNA and we're in now the passwords never show up the username does and I feel kind of silly telling you this because I know you know those but the username password both you know they have to match you know, you can't just say username signal and then put somebody else's password in. It's checking both of those. I know, I know, I know. I had to tell you, though. Had to make that complete. So that's all there is to it, really. That's a, that's a username password database. And actually, I'm going to show you a little something extra here for sticking, for sticking with me. Let's go ahead and do a username, Chris. And let's say, though, that I wanted, when I log in, I want to be put straight into privilege exec mode. Straight into it because we know the default is uh, user exec. See this privilege level? I'm going to talk to you about these in more detail later, but I want to mention this now since we're here. If you put privilege here and then assign the highest level of 15 and then just finish the command as you normally would, that particular user will be able to come in at privilege level 15. The other users will not. So let me do a quick log out here and I'll do a return. I'll put myself in this time. See that? So now I don't have to enter the enable password because it's my router. <laughs> it's my switch and I can configure it any way I want because it's a lab switch. So that's the key right there. If you want that user to be put straight into enable mode, put privilege 15 right in the middle of this command. And otherwise, just don't put anything, just leave it alone and leave it at the default. I do want to show you one more thing. We're going to hang in because I want to show you a little something about all of these passwords that we've got going on. Because let's go from the top to the bottom here. And we know the enable secret password. We know what it is, but obviously this hex, this hash result is uh, pretty wild. And it is different than the one in the previous video because I did take it off and then I wanted to put it back on. So the hash is a little bit different. But you see the result. And that's one thing I want to absolutely mention to you. The hash result will be different even if you use the same password on two different devices. So the enable password of CSENT is just sitting there. And we see all these username passwords that I just put in. And there's privilege 15 in the middle of mine. And we also see that the passwords gasoline, table, squirrel, and Bryant are all just sitting there because they're in clear text because of that level of zero of encryption. So by default, the enable password isn't encrypted. My passwords there aren't encrypted. And if we go to the bottom with the console port, password basketball is all just sitting there. There is a really great way to, do, to prevent over-the-shoulder network attacks here on all of these and that's by enabling a service here on the router. Now you'll see two or three services usually mentioned right up here at the top of the config. This is not an exhaustive list of switch or router services by any means. There are dozens of them. Different devices will have different services, but you'll almost always see this one in the config 
and it's going to be turned off by default. But we can turn it right back on with service password encryption. That's actually the command. And we'll do that right now. And actually, let me show you the full list of services here before we do that. See? <laughs> I wasn't kidding. There are quite a few of them. But uh, we are not going to worry about those today. But we do need to know this one. You'll see a couple of others before the course is over. I'll do a quick save there. And now, my favorite there is Telnet Zero Idle. Because I just like to say Zero Idle. Anyway, check this out. Now look at all your passwords. They're all encrypted. We have cash, excuse me, hash results for each one of these. Isn't that great? And we go to the bottom. You'll notice it went to the highest level, which was seven. Zero is unencrypted. Seven is encrypted as strong as it can get. And see here at the bottom, now all the word basketball is totally hashed. So that is a great thing to do. Again, not the world's strongest encryption. It's kind of like the enable secret but it's still better than just having all your passwords sit there in clear text. That is absolutely no fun at all. That concludes our look at securing the switches to this point. Now I've got a little bonus for you. Here's what I'm going to do. The next topic that we are going to discuss and see in action and configure is called port security. And the CSENT and CCNA exams want you to know a little about it, but I want you to know everything you need to know for the field as well. So what I'm going to do is take the entire port security section for my CCNA security course, bring it over here, and I'm going to put that in the course next. I want you to watch those, see what's going on. We've got sticky addresses, dynamic addresses, static addresses, all kinds of configs you need to know about. And we talk about them, we configure them, and then you know we troubleshoot them because you'll actually see them in action and you'll actually see some ports get shut down on some violations. So th that's coming up next. Plenty of port security work, and then we'll move on to the next section. See you there.